Well, you're actually gonna publish that? Uh, yeah. Isn't that just like another YouTube tutorial? It's on color grading. Don't you remember what Peter and Maddie's video said? Tutorials are dead. I don't think that's exactly what they said. Yeah, we need to go back to something that you're actually good at. Okay, what's that? Being a p who lives in his parents' basement. You're like Michael Jordan playing baseball or Johnny Depp starting a band. You don't belong. <laughs> yeah, but they're pursuing their passions. Well, what you need to do is pursue a new passion. And that is... Uh, being a p who lives in his parents' basement. There's this term that I've heard recently quite a bit called imposter syndrome, which basically in the Google definition, hey Siri, Google imposter syndrome. I found this on the web for imposter syndrome. Check it out. To put it simply, imposter syndrome is the experience of feeling like a phony. You feel as though at any moment you are going to be found as a fraud, like you don't belong where you are and you only got there through dumb luck. It can affect anyone no matter their social status, work, background, skill level, or degree of expertise. Whenever I publish something and release it, the metrics, my insecurities, and mental banter and perfectionism tend to go into the way and I feel like the stuff that I've created just stands out like a sore thumb. That it doesn't fit with all of the other trendy stuff that's made. And while I'll try and shape shift the content that I've done by sh shooting it in the same style, editing it in a similar fashion, giving it the exact same duration, catchy thumbnail, good title, it still does not fit within place. I'm sharing this because I feel like perhaps me, you might be feeling the same thing. YouTube is an incredible platform. And while I absolutely enjoy creating stuff for this, I still feel this sort of wrench in my wheels, which is an insecurity and a feeling of out of placeness. To give you an example, I'll have this exciting idea to shoot a vlog and not for any other reason but myself. Mm. Uh, we're gonna go raw counting. But as I'm filming, I'll start playing out the sort of analytical data within my brain of thinking, well, how's this gonna belong within this platform? What is the audience retention span gonna be within this section? Am I getting enough information to hook people in? And all of a sudden, all of this banter back and forth starts to rob the actual process of making something in the first place. As I started editing and shooting more of my YouTube videos, I realized that this fits maybe in a different space. Maybe I'm a Vimeo filmmaker, or maybe I'm a short filmmaker, or maybe I just belong planting chilies in the garden and, and making, you know, chili. I don't know why chili was like the first thing I thought of. I just feel like maybe I just don't belong within that space. So I'll shift over. Actually recently I've had the opportunity to shoot and direct a relatively cool commercial for a relatively large brand for an agency. The entire time that I was hired and put into this position, all I could think of was, I don't belong here. I don't fit within this group. All these people are way more skilled. They have way better qualifications than I do. I mean, this guy has been on 20 more sets than I have. This guy's resume is like 10 times longer than mine. You're double my age. And I don't even know what to call this piece of camera gear. And yet I'm trying to explain to you how it works. So all of these things pop up in my head and that other Zach pops into the back of my head and says, look, man, you don't belong here. There's no reason for you to be here. It was just a fluke that you were hired onto this job. It was just a coincidence that your name got put into the mix. And I would definitely talk to the agency right now and tell them that, did you mess this up? And strangely enough, the exact same narrator of that situation narrates my experience while being on YouTube at the same time. Now, both are two very different environments, but they blend together with the exact same problem, which is feeling like an imposter, feeling like I don't belong. And the reality is with both of those is I do belong. I do belong in both spaces because guess what? I put myself there. I found myself into those situations. The commercial that I ended up shooting is done. It's incredible. The brand was super happy with how it turned out and now it's hired me for more and more gigs. Um, the stuff that I'm making for YouTube, while maybe it's not getting the traction to which I look at others are getting, I'm still really stoked with where things are going with it. And that the stuff that I've been making on YouTube, funny enough, has fed my commercial making career and has fed all of these things that I'm doing on the side and actually propelling so many more things just because I'm giving myself the opportunity to create stuff.
the one thing that's killing you, the one thing that's causing imposter syndrome, and the reason why perhaps you feel like you don't belong in either an environment is a common theme, and that is comparison. There's a great quote that I've lived by, and it's by Theodore Roosevelt, and it is, comparison is the thief of joy. Perhaps you've heard of it before. I'd recommend getting it tattooed onto your arm or forehead or lower left wrist or behind your ear. No, but in all seriousness, don't get it tattooed behind your neck. I'd prefer below the lip. All you're doing is looking at someone else and their credentials and metrics. You're looking at their resume, you're looking at their skills, you're looking at their vocabulary, you're looking at how they dress, you're looking at their friends group, followers, you name it. And then what you're doing is you're putting yourself in the same playing field and comparing all of those things. Now, where YouTube does this really, really well that messes everybody up is that you have concrete numbers, analytics, data, and money to show you how poorly you're doing in comparison to someone else. This is also what social media does incredibly well. While it is super valuable for some creatives to build the business and help out, I'm so happy that I do have these analytics, a good chunk of my time looking at these numbers is not looking at how I can improve myself. It's more or less looking at how much I suck in comparison to others. And it amplifies just more of me feeling like I don't belong within a certain space. And so, so I'm very fortunate that the rest of life doesn't carry around metrics and numbers about people's heads. But overall, I want to share with you that my journey of making this commercial and my journey of making YouTube videos and my journey of just being and existing all really is amplified when I put to rest comparison and I don't compare myself to other people's qualities or details or how they dress or how they wear. I want to finish off this video by sharing a story with you. Back in 2016, I went on a trip to Europe with my girlfriend. And before that trip, my mom gifted me uh, this red jacket and I really was super stoked about it. When I had gone on this trip to Europe, the first thing I realized as soon as I got off the airplane was that no one was wearing a red Canada jacket. In fact, everyone was wearing these long black trench coats that blended in with everybody else's. And while I was in the crowd of people, I'm like, oh my God, everybody can see me wearing this, this jacket. And this thought played over and over and over in my head. All I was thinking was, can I scrape the Canada logo on the back of my jacket off? Can I get a black jacket? Is there anywhere that I can get something that everyone else is wearing and put that on over top of this? Literally, those were the thoughts that played in my head. In a sea of black jackets, I was this like red thing standing out. I looked like a pimple. When my trip had ended, and when I look back on the photos from that experience, I realized that my favorite thing, the favorite thing that highlighted in those shots was that red jacket because it was something that was me and I stood out within those shots wearing this, this really fluorescent red Canada touristy looking jacket. And what I wanna share with you is be the, be the red jacket, be your own coat that stands out within the crowd. Because at the end of the day, if you look back on your timeline, are you gonna look back and go, man, I'm so glad I fit in with everybody else? Or are you gonna say, I'm so glad I stuck to what was true with me and what actually made me happy? And that is a nice little red jacket or whatever it is. I mean, maybe don't take fashion advice from me because, but anyway, that's it guys. Thank you for, for listening. Um, be your own jacket in the sea of black trench coats. Hopefully that metaphor makes sense to you. But overall, you're always gonna feel somewhat like an imposter within an environment. It's this defense mechanism our brains pop up that you just don't fit within the group. But the reality is you do. You do fit within a certain situation and you were brought there for a reason. And the reality is it's not something greater. It's not the energy pulling you to a certain way and whatever thoughts and beliefs that you have, for sure, go with that. But the truth is you brought you there. You got yourself in that room. You put your foot in the door and now you're in that scenario. Whether it's creating content, shooting that next commercial, hanging out with a group of friends, or just being in a destination, you got you there and you got you there for a reason. And be stoked about that because it's, it's, it's meant to be. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you like my ranting and babbling on, um, you guys can uh, hit some buttons. They really do mean a whole heck of a lot. And uh, overall, hopefully you guys have an amazing day. I absolutely love you. Thanks for watching this the whole way through and I will see you all in another video. Bye. Okay, fun fact about this video, every single time that I asked Siri about imposter syndrome, 
as I was editing it, my computer would cue my phone to then ask Siri what imposter syndrome was. So while I'm in the middle of editing, Siri would like pop up while I'm, I'm making it. Anyway, the final thing I wanna share is that if you guys like the effects that were in this movie and all the different little animations, I have this thing called the Creator Pack, which you can take a look in, in the description below. There's over 100 assets from that used to, to, to do all of this fun stuff. Also, if you like the color grading, the music, all that stuff, there's links down below. I do get a bit of a kickback, but most importantly, I just want you guys to benefit from it. So um, take a look at it. This video is so much fun to make, and I love you. Have a good one. Check out the video that's playing over here, over here, something. I don't know. <laughs>